Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. Hope you're having a good time with your family and friends and liking these sessions. In today's video on Azure, I'm here to talk about Azure Resource Mover, which is one of the new technology, or I will say new tool within Azure portfolio, and it's in preview right now. So with Ignite uh, just uh, getting completed a uh, couple of weeks ago, a lot of announcements were made from Microsoft Azure perspective, and maybe I'll make uh, different videos on different topics, but uh, this was one of the topic that uh, they covered and the new functionality that they have added. So let's look at what Azure Resource Mover is, why you should use it, uh, is there any cost associated with this, and uh, what is the experience in terms of steps on the Azure side? So when we talk about Azure Resource Mover, the first thing we need to understand is that this tool is only used for moving the resources between regions, right? So say if you have uh, two regions in Azure, we'll name it region one and region two, or you can also call it uh, source and the destination because that is how uh, you will specify this when you're trying to move this. Let's say source and destination. Now, as I said, that first thing is that you can only use this feature to move between the region. Now, the second thing is that uh, why you will utilize this and uh, what are the advantage for this? So first of all, this tool gives you centralized place to keep a track of all the resources that you want to move. And we'll talk about resources in a moment. So centralized location and one place where you can see what is happening and how this uh, uh, this tool is working. Other thing I will say is that uh, this also gives you the capability of automatically deleting resources from the source destination so that you don't incur any uh, charges because as you know that uh, you know even if you have moved the resources from one region to another, those resources are still there. And if you don't go inside specifically and delete it, you will incur charges, right? So this tool, while you're doing the steps, it will tell you that, okay, uh, is it okay to delete the resources from the source? So you can say yes or no, and then those uh, will be deleted and not deleted, whatever instruction you will get. So I will say the idea about this is that uh, you will get a centralized location so that uh, you can manage and monitor everything from one place. Now, why you will use it? What is the reason uh, Microsoft brought this feature? Now, a couple of points over here, and it will all depend upon scenario to scenario, but some of the scenarios that I think that uh, you can utilize this is maybe because of data residency, right? So say, for example, your parent company, they started their business in uh, uh, Europe and then uh, that company was taken over maybe by uh, US or something like that, right, on those lines. And they said that you can't keep the data in Europe, you need to move that in uh, US. So you can use this to move the data from one region to another. So that's one case uh, scenario that I see that uh, you can utilize. Another thing, another thing I see is that uh, maybe when you started this using a specific region, Availability of services was not available in your preferred region location, but uh, three months, four months down the line, as you as you know that uh, the Azure services are pretty dynamic. They keep on adding and publishing services for different regions. So if it was not there initially, maybe on the source region, and then three months down the line, uh, it uh, was unable for the destination. So then you can also utilize this. Uh, to to move uh, to from one region to another. Another thing is, I will say, uh, maybe if you're just doing for testing purpose, right? You can just uh, quickly decommission, or uh, you know, in case, or even if the region is getting decommissioned. So, in case the region is no longer gonna support that, you can always uh, just you know move this to another region. 
So these are a couple of, I think, uh, use case scenario for this, but I would say the important thing is that this gives you a centralized location to manage uh, and move the resources from one region to another. And obviously you can automatically delete or you can give the instruction or not to delete so that uh, you don't incur any charges. So another important thing is that uh, what resources you can move, uh, that's uh, very important. So as I said that this service is in preview, so obviously the things will change, but as of today, you can use this to move uh, VMs, disk associated with that VMs, network security groups. You can also use this to move uh, public IP. Uh, internal and uh, external load balancer. You can also use this to move SQL database. I think specifically it's single and elastic pool. Uh, you can go and check the documentation, but uh, I think that that's the one that you can utilize. So at least these are some of the one that uh, comes on top of my mind uh, that you can utilize Azure resource uh, mover. Also, I think that you can obviously because Nick is uh, associated with your VM. So anything network interface card, you can also use this to move it now. In case you are worried about, right, what about my data encryption and everything? So while the data is getting moved, while it is at rest and in flight, the data will be encrypted for you. So you don't need to worry about, you know, somebody trying to steal your encryption. So data will be encrypted, but something from the metadata, because obviously the service needs to be uh, is utilized in the backend. So from metadata perspective, as of right now, since it's in preview, it's available. In, the metadata will be saved in East US2 and uh, North Europe. So not the entire information, only the metadata to make the service enable. And I'm pretty sure uh, Azure will also enable this option in, in, in more region. But you can move the data from any region to any public region. Uh, it will allow you to do that. Now, sometimes there's also a question asked, can you use this uh, tool to move the data or move the resources from on-prem to the cloud? Uh, that's the answer for that one is no. You can continue to utilize Azure Migrate from Analyze and uh, uh, moving that uh, resources to uh, Azure region. This is strictly between region to region, right? So you cannot use this for on-prem. That's one thing. Uh, talking from the pricing perspective, Price is always a concern, right? When you talk about cloud. Now, though this tool is free, there is no cost associated with Azure Resource Mover, but any service which is going to use underneath, there will be a cost associated. So some of the cost which I can think of is, is the egress charges because you're moving the data from one region to another. So there will be a cost for the egress or whatever bandwidth it is using. In case you're moving VMs, so there is a replica disk which needs to be created. So obviously that needs to be stored somewhere in the storage account. So uh, you will be paying for that uh, cost. Other thing is uh, in the in the the under the hood, it is using Azure Site Recovery to move uh, resources from one location to another. So it uh, you'll, you'll be paying for that. Too. But specifically for the tool, I will say Azure Resource Mover, it's a, it's a free tool as of right now. There is no cost associated, but again, anything that you'll be need or dependencies of that one, you need to uh, pay for that. So a pretty decent tool, I will say. So in case you are any of the scenario which I talked about, you can definitely utilize this feature. So end of the theory, let's look at, we're not gonna do the actual um, moving of resources, but let me show you on the Azure portal where you can find this service. So if I go on my Azure portal, and do a search for Azure Resource Mover. It will take you to this place. And as you can see that uh, the move option, it's only across region, which I already talked about, right? And uh, you can, it shows you the steps, select the resource to move, validate and resolve de dependencies. Now that's another very important thing. So most of the resources, they have dependencies on different uh, uh, services, right? So you can just move one resource uh, just because you wanted to move it. So it will also show you whatever the dependencies are there, you need to move that too. And uh, that will be also moved along with that. So if I go to get started, obviously I need to pick my subscription. 
from which region I want to move this. Say, for example, I want to move this from East US 2 to East US or to anything, right? So say Canada Central, I can do that, pick my subscription. Uh, sometimes there is also a question, can you use this to move between subscription? Uh, I will say that you need to move this first uh, in the same subscription and then uh, you can move this uh, to, to other subscription. Maybe I will do a separate video, but uh, the short answer is yes, uh, there is a workaround for that. If I go to next, uh, you need to pick source and the destination, right? So source you have already chosen, right? Do you want to move that from East US to, uh, and uh, your region of preference will be Canada Central. So if you go to next, so right now, as you can see, you need to pick select resources. You can go and filter by name, right? But let me just come out of this and it's pretty self-explanatory. So if I close this and if I just go under the across regions, so I was just doing some work in this, but this is, you see right over here, you can add resources. You can prepare the resources where it will tell you what are the dependencies that you require. Uh, then you can initiate the move. You can also discard the move too in case you want. You can initiate the move and you can also commit the move. So basically committing that, yes, you saying that you're going to move. So you can see that I was just doing a bit of testing uh this was in east us 2 uh and uh, i was saying that you move uh, this uh, be server to uh, to east us and you can see that the stage i'm right now is commit move so once i click on this one uh it will actually start moving but you can see already some of the stuff so my source resource group was berg and you see that uh, because i've done a couple of steps over here Destination configuration, it's already created a VNet on the uh, on my destination uh, region. Uh, you can see that it's all under the new. And if I can show you under the resource group, you see this was my source uh, resource group. And you can see BERG with East US. It's appended with the East US in this because that is where I'm trying to move. It has already created this because I've gone through some of the steps uh, over there, but it is pretty self-explanatory. And if I go back to my Azure resource mover, the only thing I need to do is to click on commit move and then whatever time it takes, right? Uh, uh, it will uh, to replicate the data from one region to another. But again, it's totally encrypted while it is in flight as well as it is in at rest. So you don't need to worry about. And uh, from the metadata perspective, it is as of right now stored in two region. One is in East US 2 and the other one is North Euro Europe. Maybe they will expand that, but it's only the metadata. Uh, but you can move this to uh, between any region as of right now, though it's in preview. So this was a quick overview on uh, Azure Resource Mover why you'll utilize this and what services you can use and also some information from the pricing perspective hope you found this video useful thanks for watching have a good day